Jerry501 here. I'm in scotsman.com. I came across this article as I was doing some research on strontium 90. And um, so I have some friends that are Scots. And so I thought I would put this out there. A cancer time bomb facing Scots born during the Cold War. Published on Saturday, 19th, January 2002. Hundreds of thousands of Scots born in the mid-60s face a higher risk of developing cancer after being exposed to record levels of nuclear fallout from Cold War atomic tests. Findings from a covert research project obtained by Scotland on Sunday reveal that contamination by the radioactive isotope strontium-90 from nuclear tests peaked in babies born in 1964. The alarming findings have raised fears that the 104,355 people born in Scotland that year may face a higher risk of developing cancers of the blood, bone marrow, or muscle. But the hundreds of thousands of Scots born during the 1950s and 60s will also have been exposed to higher than usual levels of radioactive contamination and are at risk of developing fatal diseases as a result. Exposure to strontium-90, which is released in nuclear explosions and stored in the bones in the same way as calcium, can increase the risk of developing leukemia and sarcoma. Researchers at York Hill Children's Hospital in Glasgow tested 2,111 thigh bones from dead babies and children between 1959 and 1970 as part of an international project to discover the threat posed to humans by the testing of nuclear weapons. Most of the children came from the west of Scotland while a small number came from Perthshire, Ross and Cromarty, Sutherland and Orkney. Scientists found the average concentration of strontium-90 in children's bones had reached a level nearly four times the maximum dose many experts consider acceptable whoops, for adults. Some babies and children had strontium-90 levels far higher than the average and all the bones tested had hot spots of contamination which posed an even greater risk, researchers said. Babies and toddlers up to the age of two were at greatest risk from the radioactive fallout from tests of dirty hydrogen bombs during the 50s and 60s, the study found. The peak year was found to be 1964, when many children were found to have up to six times the maximum rec recommended levels of strontium-90 in their bones. Children were chosen for the research because their bones grow faster than adults, taking in more of the radioactive element. Glasgow became the main center for research in the UK because of its high rainfall level, bringing the fallout in the atmosphere to the ground level faster. The findings of the 11-year study organized by the Medical Research Council and the UK Atomic Energy Authority caused such alarm that they were used to push the case for the introduction of the 1963 Test Ban Treaty, banning the testing of nuclear devices in the atmosphere. Dr. Chris Busby, an independent expert on radiation risk, said, exposure of this kind will have already had a consequence in terms of cancer levels and genetic damage to the people involved, and it will still be doing damage. People exposed in the 60s will be coming up to 40 now, so they will not be getting their full whack of cancers until they begin to hit 50 or 60. There is no safe level of strontium-90, and while government agencies may try to compare it to natural background levels, it is like the difference between eating a hot coal and warming yourself in front of a fire. People exposed in the 60s should be worried, but the sad thing is, is that it's too late to do anything about it. A transcript of evidence given to a government expert group currently investigating the ethics of the research reveals the full extent of the contamination problem in Scotland. Former pathologist Professor Gavin Arneal, who was involved in the study at York Hill, said all cow's milk and every tin of national dried milk contained strontium-90. Every mother's breast milk included strontium-90. 
all vegetation and all animals were known to be contaminated. He added, our aim was to measure the likely increase in strontium-90 levels as hydrogen bombs continue to explode and levels approach concentrations at which real concern could be felt. So, in other words, they were using the Scots as guinea pigs, specifically the children. This level was reached at the peak in 1964 by the zero to six month age group. Doctors had drawn up a plan to limit children's exposure to strontium-90. However, because of the secrecy of the research, it was never publicized. Professor David Hull of the West of Scotland Cancer Surveillance Unit has carried out research tracking 600,000 children born between 1959 and 1970 in the west of Scotland up to the age of 20. Hull said the 1964 group had strontium-90 levels up to six times the background dose. We didn't see any major increase in the high risk 1963 to 1966 group up to the age of 20, but you might expect to see these sorts of cancers until people are in their 50s or 60s. The high-risk group are only in their 30s now. Sue Roth, an expert on the fallout from nuclear weapons test based at Dundee University Center for Medical Education, said the significance of the evidence from the 1960s should not be underestimated. This evidence caused so much concern that it stopped atmospheric nuclear weapons testing, she said. Well, of course it's going to cause concern when you're sitting there as a physician testing all these little children. I mean, this is like inhumane. Man. Well, my heart goes out to Yet another country that was guinea pigged. Oh, God. What is wrong with these people? What is wrong with the governments of the world? My God. God help us.